everyone, this is Shaki. I've got the Shinobi 2 over here, We're shooting with the Sony A7S III. We're out here in Fairfield Amphitheater. I'm trying to get some B-roll footage for a documentary that I'm shooting. But yeah, let's get into it. So right over here, I've got the HDMI connection in and a USB-C connection in. You'd probably be wondering what is the purpose of the USB-C connection. This cable transports camera control and use the Atom OS tools to monitor this image. And together, it's an incredible tool to have on set. Over here, we've got the HDMI cable. It's got a button up over here that provides added security. And I'm just gonna connect that in. And there you go. You've got that safety feature on the new HDMI cable that we've introduced. All right, so turning around over here real quick, I'm gonna show you how this whole thing works. So if you come around this way, I could show you, you can see the screen up over here. It's super thin, it's super light. You know, compared to like our previous Shinobi monitor, it's come down heaps in size and it's 1,500 nits. You can see how thin this profile is of the Shinobi 2, it's super light, it's super light. I'm just gonna quickly just take this off and you can see. One of these NPF batteries will last you for a really long time. As you can see, now that I've got this whole rig ready to go, I'm just gonna move on to a bridge that's close by and have that framed up. The sun's heading this way. I think just about here, we're getting a pretty good angle. All right, so first thing first, let's go change the color profile. So we recommend you to shoot in HLG because you can make the best of both worlds for delivering in SDR or in HDR. And also, you can also maximize the dynamic range of your camera and be able to see that image right on your Shinobi 2. It's a 1,500-nit monitor, and you can see I'm in a bright, sunny condition over here, and I can still see what's going on. So without talking too much, I'm just gonna get straight into it and show you how to configure your camera. You can see up over here, I've got the info display going on, which is, you know, we actually don't want that. We want, actually want a clean display. But in this case, I'm gonna actually configure everything on the camera so you can see it on a larger monitor. And then I'm gonna finally turn that display in for off. So I'm gonna press menu, and then we're gonna go into color and tone. And when you go into color and tone, we can go into picture profile and then change the picture profile. You can, you've got a couple of different options here that's built in by Sony. This same application actually works with other cameras as well. So Canon, Fuji, Panasonic, Zcam, you name it. It's a similar sort of a configuration. In this instance, I'm gonna show it for the Sony. So I'm gonna go into PP1. Let's go into Gamma. Uh, it's already set to HLG. I've already configured that, but you can see you've got a few different options over here that's built into your camera, but I'm gonna go with HLG. And you can see over here in color mode as well, you got BT2020. That's great. So let's jump out of that. Back in the menu. I'm now gonna go into the output menu, which is buried in the external output. I can go into HDMI resolution, keep that to auto. It'll automatically do a handshake with the Shinobi 2 to make sure it's getting the right signal. So I'm gonna go into HDMI output setting. You can see over here, I can record media during HDMI output, etc. We've got the time code function as well. You can turn that on so you can see the time code that's gonna come straight into the Shinobi 2. And then you've got your audio output as well that's going into the Shinobi 2. Finally, we want a clean feed signal. So I'm gonna turn this off and then voila. Now you're getting a clean feed signal straight out of your camera onto your Shinobi 2 without any obstructions. If I tap on the Shinobi 2 screen, you've got all the usual monitoring features that everyone's kind of familiar with. I actually haven't set up my picture profile over here correctly. So let's go and set that up. Because we're setting out a log signal and you can see it's got the Sony HLG BT2020 and I can also change what camera profile we're on. So in this case, we're in Sony. We're gonna go straight into Sony. We can also configure this device to preview the image in different monitoring modes. You got SDR, HLG, PQ, 709, or you can load in your custom lap via the SD card slot. So in this case, we're gonna set it up with the HLG mode. Getting onto the most exciting bit, which is camera control. So I just wanted to quickly show you how this works. You've got this USB-C cable that's connected to the back of the Shinobi 2. I also wanted to just show you, when you connect via the USB-C connection, your camera will automatically pop up and ask you for a few different options in the USB connect mode. For the Sony cameras, for camera control to work, we want to turn it onto the remote shoot PC remote mode. And when you turn that on, it'll ask you the settings to set that up. 
press set. You can see right up over here now the camera control button is available and if you were to tap that in, you've got all the camera controls available for you now. And here's the best bit, you can actually control it all from this screen. I'm just changing white balance now. I'm changing shutter speed. I can open this up. I can also change the aperture and I can also change the ISO. Right on the top of here is the camera information. You can see the battery read. You've got the recording time that's available, the format that it's recording in, the codec and the focus mode. So if I tap that one more time and it'll go away. So you wanna make sure in the input menu, the camera status is turned on. Going into the control section, you can see the type of the connection that's going on. That's via USB-C. You also get the function to control it via a LANK cable for other camera models. You can see over here, it's also identified it's a Sony camera, the 7S3 and the shutter speed is the mode we're recording in. In other cameras that has shutter angle, you can use that function and change that. So now I'm gonna show you the power of being able to control your camera directly from the Shinobi 2's monitor and use the Atom OS tools to monitor this image. And together it's an incredible tool to have on set. So you can see we are recording in 25 frames per second, so let's fix that up. We're on 50 right now. Now you can see the image is really bright. So let's bring up the tools over here. My favorite tool is the false color tool and you can see it's really red that means it's clipping and you can see over here 109 that range over there means it's really hot so let's go back into our camera control tools and increase the aperture and bring that down and normalize that as I've normalized that there's still a little bit of red but I think we can give a creative decision on that you know it is a sky it can be a slightly overexposed and if I was to go back into our tool over here and I was to turn that off, you can see how I've normalized that image. Maybe that might be a bit too bright. We can actually bring that down. You can also use your waveform tool over here. So I can tap over here and make that bigger. Go back into camera controls, change the ISO. When I press record on the Shinobi 2 screen, There'll be a red outline indicator showing you that your camera is recording. Down over here, it went from standby to record mode. If you just pay attention over here, when I press this record button, it goes back to standby. This all is working because both the devices were configured correctly to talk to each other at the same time. So there you go, guys. That's the all new Shinobi 2. Go get creative.